to understand how to control squash bugs, you need to understand how squash bugs work just like any other garden pest. There are tons of videos out there already telling you how to control squash bugs, but I actually want to talk about the science behind the method that I use and why it works. But before I discuss why the soapy water method works, let me tell you a little bit about squash bug behavior and their life cycle. Because again, it's important to understand your enemy if you want to know how to conquer them. When the squash bugs come out in the springtime, they take flight and they search for a host. This is why crop rotation doesn't really work whenever it comes down to squash bugs. When the bugs do find a host, they begin feeding and laying eggs, and within 5-10 to 10 days, those eggs will begin to hatch. These tiny new nymphs will usually hang out right on the underside of the leaf. They usually don't move too much, even with variations in weather or temperature. They're too young, too fragile. However, the older nymphs and the adults, they like to run for cover during the heat of the day or when there's stormy weather, and they also retreat at nighttime. Therefore, during the heat of summer, their activity periods will be kind of limited, so you may feel like you don't really see them, but they're there. Nymphs begin to reach maturity at around four to six weeks of age, which is the point at which that they'll start laying eggs. And this is why squash bugs seemingly infest your patch overnight. They're always hiding whenever gardeners are out searching through their plants during the heat of the day. And when the first generation of nymphs start to reach maturity and they start laying eggs, the population explodes very quickly because there's that many more bugs laying eggs and hatching all at the same time. This sounds a little intimidating, but since it takes about five to eight weeks for an egg to go from being laid to reaching maturity, it's actually easier to control populations than you may think. Yes, they are pretty much impossible to eliminate because new adults can and will fly in throughout the entire summer. You're not gonna get rid of them. They're gonna keep flying in. They're gonna keep infesting, laying eggs. So population control is the best method to apply with squash bugs rather than elimination. But they really are one of the easiest pests to keep under control as long as you're monitoring the population and egg laying and spraying whenever lots of the nymphs begin to hatch. Me personally, I don't even bother removing the eggs from the plants because in my opinion it's just faster, easier, less aggravating to spray the baby bugs than it is trying to remove those eggs from the leaves because some of those eggs are really hard to remove. Now let's talk about respiration and squash bugs. Squash bugs actually respirate through these tiny little tubes that are on their body. That's how they take in oxygen from the environment. So these little tubes, they kind of act like their lungs. Normally, if it rains, the water will beat up and roll off of the bug, keeping them safe. And if they get stuck in water, like if they fall into a puddle, they'll have little air bubbles that'll get trapped around their body, around these tubes, and these tubes will still be able to gain oxygen from the air bubble and the air bubble can actually pull oxygen in from the surrounding water. So not only does the squash bug kind of have a safety net around it of air, that air that's in those bubbles is able to pull more oxygen out from the water, keeping the squash bug from suffocating for long periods of time when stuck in water. This allows the bug to find dry, safe land so that it can continue on with its life, make more babies, so on and so forth. So the science behind this is actually kind of fascinating if you're a curious individual like I am. But in any case, how does something as simple as soap of almost any kind work to take these critters out? It's actually very simple. The soap actually breaks surface tension. Therefore, whenever you spray these bugs with soapy water, you're infiltrating those little tubes that they respirate through and they can't get any air bubbles around them because the soap breaks the surface tension. 
Therefore, water just kind of envelops them. It infiltrates the tubes and they essentially drown in the soapy water. Even though they're not sitting in a body of water, they're not sitting in a puddle or a cup or anything like that, it actually just drowns them by sitting on them because they have a coating of water in those tubes they get filled with water it's much like if you had water inside of your lungs they can't breathe they cannot utilize the oxygen that's in the water because you have to soak the bug this is also why only spraying the plant does not work it doesn't work against the eggs you have to spray the bug with the soapy water. If you do not make contact with the bug, if you do not soak the bug, it will not work. That is why it's absolutely critical to spray during active feeding times. This also isn't a one and done solution. You do have to spray, you have to monitor eggs. You need to monitor during active feeding times to see what the population looks like. And when it does begin to grow and get out of hand, that's whenever you need to be spraying your plants. I actually use the egg clutches as a good indicator of when to spray. So if I'm going through and I see two, three, even four clutches on one plant, that's fine. But if I start seeing two or three clusters on a leaf, if most of the leaves on the plant have eggs on them, that is whenever I will go out and usually spray that weekend. And then I'll turn around and I will spray again within five to seven days after most of those eggs have already hatched. Then my populations take a nosedive. However, you may want to spray on a weekly basis, especially if you're a new gardener and you're not sure how to gauge the number of clutches that are on your plants. Because for most of us gardeners who have been doing this for a few years, we can see where our populations sit. We generally know when that tipping point is as to when our plants are going to start to go down. So if this is all new to you and you are injecting for vine borers, I highly recommend just doing them both at once. Just go ahead and inject your vines, turn around and spray. You definitely want to try to rinse your plants off if you can. You're going to want to do this again during active feeding times and usually those active feeding times are usually before or after. The pollinators are usually out so if you're spraying in the morning be sure to rinse off the plants and blast off the squash bugs if you can. Now I would try to avoid doing this too close to the heat of the day because you don't want to fry your plants by having them completely just wet and sitting out in the harsh sunlight especially if you live somewhere that's got some very powerful sun during the summer such as you know California Florida Texas that could be a bad idea even here it's kind of a bad idea but we actually get like daily pop-up storms in the summer so my plants are frequently soaked and what have you but I actually try to spray my plants in the evening time that's when I like to spray but for some of you that may not be possible you may prefer to do it in the morning but just try not to leave your plants just soaking wet in the heat of the day so again I love this method because it's effective it is cheap it's easy it's quick you probably have all of the stuff on hand already and it's not a conventional pesticide or poison. So, I mean, it's the same stuff that you're probably using on your body, on your dishes, that you eat from. So, I love this method. You could spray it right before harvesting. It doesn't even matter. So, now that we have discussed how it works, why it works, squash bug lie cycle, let's talk about what I do. And we're doing this last because it's super easy. Little soap, little water in a spray bottle. Super simple, just a little squirt. I mean, you just need enough to break surface tension. So there's really no magic number. I mean, if you put too much in there, like if you went with a tablespoon or more, you know, it could be a little too soapy, especially since you're doing it in just, you know, a spray bottle. So what you're gonna wanna do, you want to spray on the underside of leaves, the stems, the fruits, under the fruits, the, around the flowers and under the main stem, and also remember to do this during active feeding time. If you go out there and there's a ton of squash bugs everywhere, you know you found their active feeding time and this is when you want to spray. Now my recommendation is to start at the 
bottom of the plant start at the very base of the plant because they're going to start running when you start spraying. So if you start at the bottom and you cover the fruits, get the underside of the fruits, the underside of the vine, and then go up the leaf stems and under the leaves. And that's my favorite way to do it. And that's how you're going to get most of the bugs. So again, super simple. I absolutely love the fact that it only takes me maybe 10 minutes to spray my plants. I can usually zoom right through them. It's actually an easier process than injecting for the squash vine borers, but the squash vine borers are far harder to control, unfortunately, and really the injection method is really the best way to go about it. So that's what I do. I usually inject and then I'll run through and spray like an hour later or something. Sometimes I do vice versa. I'll spray, rinse, then inject. So, but I usually do them kind of close because I like to just get it all over with for the week. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys because I've had a ton of questions about squash bugs. So thank you guys so much for stopping in. And if you have any other questions about squash bugs, just ask them below and I will answer them in the comments section. Hopefully I covered most everything, but I probably didn't. And you guys have always had great questions for me in the past. So I love to answer those so that future viewers can see them and learn from those as well. And then if I need to, if I miss that much information, I will totally do a part two to cover all of that in a separate video. As far as the vine borer experiment, I have my plants in the ground. I have some seeds that I need to replant. We actually had a cucumber beetle problem pop up here recently and this is the first time I've ever had to deal with them really. I mean I've seen them but there's never been an infestation. Thank you guys so much for dropping in and I hope you all are having a wonderful growing season so far. I can't wait to hear about your harvest and what's going on in your garden so be sure even if you don't have a question about the squash bugs let me know what's going on down in the comments. How things are going, what kind of challenges you're facing, what you're excited for. Bye everyone.